Well, that's a good question. Uh, first of all, it was fun. Uh, I've, I've, since I've been here, I've wanted to write about tuition fee policy. Uh, I am by training an economist, and th these questions interest me. The whole question about uh, the impact of tuition fees on access, the role of student financial assistance. I used to be a university administrator, and so the issue about revenues and, and, and you know, I have some understanding of the, the adequacy of revenues and then the dependency of revenues on tuition and grants and so on. So it was an opportunity to kind of bring together economist professional training with uh, a university administrators experience uh, at a time when I think it's essential for, uh, I think it's one of the most important PSE issues at the moment. Um, you know, the government that does have an $18 billion plus deficit. The, re the institutions have some revenue shortfalls. There is a lot of pressure on, um, uh, on tuition fee policy. The government has to come up with a new policy, not this coming year, but the year thereafter. A lot of pressure to let the fees go in order to generate revenue. There's a lot of pressure to keep them down, reverse freeze them, even reverse them because the government has, and again appropriately, set as a policy to increase representation of underrepresented groups. Um, so this is the kind of policy issue that I, it, it's a lot of fun to write about, but I also think it's really, really, really important. And I guess maybe the final thing I'd add is that we at HECO were in the fortunate position of, be, of having been able over the last two or three years to sponsor uh, some really interesting research and to do some really interesting research ourselves. And that research has, there, there's a number of important consensus almost items, if you like, coming out of it in, with respect to uh, the role of tuition and accessibility, the role of how do you design an efficient student financial assistance plan, what works, what doesn't, uh, who goes, who's not going. We know a lot more about that than we did three, four, or five years ago, and so it was an opportune time to bring that together. So interest in my personal interest, important need, and, and, and I think an opportunity to feed into a debate in a constructive and useful way. Um, but we identified three main policy objectives for tuition policy. The first is that all students who are qualified and interested should be able to go to post-secondary education, so that's an affordability issue. Uh, the second issue is that tuition is also revenue for the institutions, for the colleges and for the universities, and they need sufficient amounts of revenue to be able to deliver the quality education that students expect and, and, observe, and deserve. And then the third is that the amount of money the government puts in, general taxpayers' money, should align, be appropriate with its fiscal capacity and with the amount of money it wishes to spend on post-secondary education. And, of course, we all know that there are many demands on government scarce taxpayers' money for health care and all other kinds. So it has to stack post-secondary education priorities against, against these other, other needs. So all three of those are, are objectives. And what the paper argues is that they're closely intertwined and interdependent, and you can't really think of one without thinking of all three of them at the same time. Well, there are gaps necessarily in all three because they're conflicting objectives. And so, it, it, you know, it'd be an ideal state if you could meet your objectives in all three, but they're necessarily, if we're meeting one, we're, we're going to have uh, difficulties meeting the, 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 some of the others. But, so for example, we know that there are some students who, notwithstanding the fact that they're qualified, and might be interested in going to post-secondary education or not going. There is about, uh, no, there's about 30 percent, 30, 35 percent of Ontarians at the moment who don't have post-secondary education. So we would like to increase that. So that's a gap. We certainly know from uh, reports in newspapers and reports from uh, the, the institutions themselves that they feel strapped for revenue. They feel they don't have sufficient revenue to provide the quality education and we hear stories about large class sizes and, and things like that. So there, there's, a, there's a gap with respect to perceived revenue needs and revenue availability. And then the third one is again the third objective. Uh, we know from lots of press reports about the government's 18 plus billion dollar deficit and the need to find funds and, and to reduce the deficit. And so 
notwithstanding the priority it puts on post-secondary education, it does also, of course, have to balance the budget and fund health care and K-12 to and all of the other competing demands. So in some sense, there's a gap in, in all three of them. What surprised me the most is there's just absolutely no question. This is an area that I know, at least thought I knew a lot about, uh, had read about, had followed very closely, and when I dug into it and saw the extent to which Ontario has moved towards an income contingent student loan repayment plan. And uh, anyone who's familiar with this knows that the very words income contingent loan repayments are hugely controversial. And uh, I personally think that that is, it's actually a very, very good way to provide student assistance. Uh, and it always used to bother me that we weren't closer to something like an income contingent loan repayment scheme. Well, when you actually look at what Ontario and other provinces, but Ontario and the federal government have done over time in introducing repayment of loans and repayment of debts that is tied to your income after graduation, um, we're most of the way towards an income contingent uh, uh, loan plan. The principles are in place, the uh, procedures are in place, it's simply the processes. We have a very cumbersome, you have to apply and you have to be appraised, but uh, it, it, the concept of the amount of your student debt that you will have to repay as a function of your income after graduation, not before graduation, uh, we're most of the way there. And I truly hadn't fully appreciated that, uh, notwithstanding the fact that I'm very close to, to this topic. Uh, that came as a big surprise.